What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So I've had my Samsung Galaxy M51 for nearly two months now, 51 days, give or take. And after using this device, I have but one thing to say about it. This is the mid-range Samsung phone that simply offers the most. The biggest battery, a massive display, all the right specs, a well-rounded camera setup too. It's the complete package and then some. And for a vast majority of people looking for a phone for around $350, this is the one to get. Unfortunately, the M51 isn't a phone that's available for everyone. You may not even know about Samsung's M series devices if you live in the US or Canada or most places in Europe even. But if you're in India or Asia, you probably already know how good this phone is. I wanted to experience it too, which is why, as someone from the US, I still decided to sort of import it and attempt to use it here. And I'll talk about my experience with all that too. But the bottom line is that out of all of Samsung's mid-range offerings this year, all the different A-series phones and the rest of the M-series lineup, this M51 is absolutely the one to get. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this phone, maybe you want to do some comparison shopping or see if it's available in your area, I'll leave some links down below in the video description to where you can get this M51 at its cheapest current prices, no matter where you may live. So check down there so you don't miss out on any good deals, but let's just go ahead and get right into it and I'll talk about why this phone is so good and so unique. At a glance, the M51 looks nearly identical to most of Samsung's higher level mid-range phones from 2020. In fact, it's essentially just an A71. It's got the same screen size, 6.7 inches, nearly the same body, the same same design and camera setup around back, you really can't tell a difference. And honestly, I think that's great. There isn't a thing I'd change about how this phone looks, from the modern hole punch camera cutout to the super slim bezels all around. Around back, it's an all plastic rear housing, and that's sort of what you should expect. All Samsung mid range phones have this, but the frame is metal at least, and sure, it doesn't have the premium looking design cues like a polished chrome frame or a rainbow finish, but all in all, it's fine. There's no real issues with the design and build. The only discernible difference between this M51 and an A71 is actually the device's thickness. And this sort of hints at the first major thing that sets this phone apart. The chunkier body is a result of this M51 packing in an absolutely massive 7,000 milliamp battery. Size-wise, that's 40% bigger than any A-series, S-series, and even Note device that Samsung offers right now. The numbers don't really mean a whole lot by themselves, so let's talk real world usage. My M51 can last me two full days without ever needing to be connected to a charger, and I think some people could maybe even make this phone last longer than that. I've seen six to seven hours of screen on time per day, and by the second day, I've got 10 to 20% juice left. So if you don't stare at your phone all day like I do, I I know you can stretch it even further. The thing with the battery in this phone is that it's not just good, it's not just a bit better than last year's phone or other phones in its price range, it's leaps and bounds ahead of similarly priced, similarly spec'd devices. And that's what separates it. And the real kicker here is that Samsung very well could have crammed this oversized battery into any random smartphone and maybe compromised on some other features and specs, but they didn't. They gave this phone that ridiculous battery and they still decided to keep everything else that makes this phone so good. The massive 6.7 inch display is a Super AMOLED Plus panel, the same as the A71 with the 2400 by 1080 resolution at 393 pixels per inch. It's bold, it's bright, it's vibrant, and very colorful, and you obviously have a ton of space to work with. Given its price range and the fact that this phone was released closer to the end of this summer, I can't complain. Sure, everyone now has their focus on high refresh rate, 90 hertz and 100 
120 hertz screens, something you don't get here. But for $350, you really won't get that feature anywhere yet. But what you do get here though is a fantastic looking screen for the price, a huge display for watching all your favorite content, and an overall viewing experience that I think warrants no real complaints. Now, underneath the display, you might suspect there to be an in-display fingerprint reader. The A51 and A71 had that feature after all, but with this phone, Samsung did something totally different. They threw a physical fingerprint sensor under the power button on the side, and this was 100% the right move. I did not like the in-display readers on the A-series phones. I thought it was noticeably slower and more consistent than flagship devices, which just made them frustrating to use. But this power button fingerprint sensor combination works really well. And it's sort of, I guess, a sidestep or maybe even a step back in a sense that actually is a better move in the end. For ease of use, for speed, and for accuracy, this setup just makes way more sense. As with all mid-range Samsung phones, the M51 does have just the one single external speaker placed down below by the USB-C port, and I can't really complain, it's fine, all the other A-series phones have this same speaker setup, but I'm just hoping Samsung does make the jump to dual stereo sound on their mid-range line next year. It's certainly time. And here's a quick sample of the speaker so you can get an idea. With the internal specs, you might be surprised to know that there's actually not a lot to say here. I don't just want to gloss over this because it's obviously important, but there's more to the story besides just the internal components. I'll still break it down though. You get a Snapdragon 730G chipset, the choice of either 6 or 8 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigs of built-in storage with an SD card slot. And that combination of stuff is nothing really new. A lot of phones from mid and even late 2020 all utilize these similar specs. And performance wise and real world use, this is a fully capable device in every sense. It's essentially the highest end phone you can get before jumping to something like the S series and you should expect this device to be able to handle anything and everything you want to throw at it. It's a particularly solid gaming device and great at managing apps with enough RAM to keep things current. What's different here though that a lot of people wanted me to talk about actually has to do with the software experience. It's Android 10 out of the box, but this ships with Samsung One UI 2.1 Core. Now, you might guess that it's sort of a slimmed down version of One UI, and in some sense that's true. The phone lacks software features like private mode, the secure folder, the full Knox security package, and even Samsung Pay and Samsung Pass, but in the end, it's still essentially the same overall One UI and Android experience. And to be honest, the features I found missing with One UI Core to me don't really matter, simply because I don't even use them with a flagship Samsung device. I'm sure for some people, the missing features in Core are a little annoying. It kind of devalues the OS overall. And I get the frustration, but I don't really feel like it's reason enough to be too disappointed. In the end, you still get 98% of the Android and One UI experience you would expect. Now, let me actually also talk about using this M51 in a region where it's not technically supported, like here in the US. I purchased this unlocked international M51, which is the M515FDS variant, and it arrived with no region lock and no issues with setting it up. I essentially just popped my AT&T SIM card into the phone and I was really good to go. Now, coverage-wise, I could get all the 3G I wanted, but unfortunately LTE and 4G were more inconsistent than I would have liked. I could get that better 4G or LTE connection from time to time, but the more places I went, the more limited I realized that this phone was. And I didn't configure like any of the APN settings, I just sort of wanted to see how things went with no additional setup. And everyone's experience with this is going to be a little different depending on where you're located, what network you're on, 
on and all that kind of stuff. So you'll have to double check which 3G, LTE, and 4G bands are supported by this phone and by your network. For me, while it was a little annoying to almost always be stuck on 3G, I've been spending most of my time at home anyway, like I'm sure a lot of you have been too, and I'm always connected to Wi-Fi, or if I am somewhere, I'm in a place with Wi-Fi. So it ended up being not as big of a deal, but for US folks hoping to get the full experience with an M-series phone like this phone, you still might be missing out. Finally, let's just talk cameras, and with this, Samsung once again brought everything that was great with the A71 over to this M51. This phone packs an identical quad lens setup around back. It's the 64 megapixel main lens, 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, 5 megapixel macro, and 5 megapixel depth sensor. And the results, in my opinion, they mimic what we saw on the A71, which is awesome. It's a solid, very capable camera setup for most every situation. Low light shots are probably what lacks the most, and the 32 megapixel selfie camera is very Samsung-esque. I kind of look a bit pale, over-beautified with the skin tone, and don't quite have the right look, but in general, I don't have a ton more to complain about. You even get features here like 4K video recording with the front and rear cameras, HDR, video stabilization. There's a lot to like and plenty to utilize. The 64 megapixel shooting mode is something I also find pretty valuable too. All in all, it's a top tier mid-range camera setup with no compromises, and it's exactly what this phone deserves. For those of you who can get this phone, you absolutely should. It's far and away the most feature-packed mid-range device Samsung offers across their endless lineup of phones. The battery capacity alone is the thing that separates this from the pack, but everything else is still top of the line in the mid-range space. For us folks here in the US and everywhere else this phone isn't sold, we can still use the device. I'm happy I got it, and the network limitations for me weren't a deal breaker. But just do a little research for your specific network capability, and you might find that you may may be able to use this phone. So there you go. Those are all of my thoughts on the M51. What do you guys think about this phone? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.